a podcast on Dave Bautista, the Leviathan. He started off in OVW. I forget if he started anything before OVW, but it was like big OVW alumni that included Sean Benjamin, Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, all future stars of the company. I believe built up by uh, by Jim Cornette. He had a good look. He was big. So the Leviathan persona looked pretty good. I've never actually seen a match, but I felt like he was going to places just by his look alone. Probably why he was sought out after as an actor. Later on, he would later debut after a, a draft split between Raw and SmackDown as Deacon Bautista, the hired gun of Devon Dudley. I felt like the Devon Dudley push could have went far. He looked bit, he looked good in the as a bodyguard. I thought that role was good. Obviously, he would be a lot better later. Then again, I felt like he was never used to his highest potential, which I'll get to in a moment. I don't really remember his fuse with Reverend Devon and uh, Batista vs. Who. I felt like Reverend Devon could have won places. They just sort of forgot about it and then recombined the Dullies for no reason. Other than probably that the t-shirts sold a lot better when they were combined as a tag team. And the table stuff. Oh my brother, testify. I wonder what would have happened if Devon and Batista had stayed together. Maybe even tagged a little bit longer. Got some tag belts. Prior to Devon reuniting with Bubba and TNA. Everyone knows Evolution. I don't like the idea of Evolution as it seems to just push Triple H. I'll be like, pushing Triple H isn't necessarily bad. Of course, there's a clickage issue. And the fact that, like, there were times where he got higher billing than Hogan and Rock and Austin. But on the other hand, at least he knew he was going to leave the company because he was married to the boss's daughter. Um, they're trying to do the Four Horsemen thing with Ric Flair as J.J. Dillon. Randy Orton. There's too many big faces. I felt like Mark and Drag would have fit better. Then again, we would have never had the Dave Bautista turn at on Triple H. I bet we might not have never happened either anyway if the fans didn't react and he didn't pull it off when Orton was failing. This Orton was poorly written, unlike later when he became the legend killer. Bautista had one of the highest sought out WrestleMania's fix was acting and the ability to perceive himself as a master manipulator, mastermind, guy who backstabbed people, etc. It's a shame he never ends up going to participate or win or ca get cashed in on with the money in the bank. Shawn Michaels and Triple H used to be a team. There's a feud against each other. That was a little bit clique centric, but I would have liked Shawn Michaels to team up with Batista and maybe The Rock against Evolution. They, the Rocks are like at the mode after a while. Rock and McFoley versus Evolution it felt like a much smaller feud than it could have been. Rock versus Austin, Cross versus Triple H. That's been done in a long time, and it would have been good to see this again. Rock and Batista doing spine busters. I would like to see Batista. T well, we've never seen Batista and The Rock and Shawn Michaels tag because, like, Shawn Michaels and The Rock had issues. We'll get into that later. But Shawn versus. That's Shawn versus Cena. And Cena did a good job playing up the fact that Shawn Michaels breaks, breaks up with his tag team partners. But I felt like Bautista and Shawn Michaels would have had a much more interesting dynamic considering that Bautista 
backstabs people a lot better too. I feel like when Michael's he's a little bit more goofy or his but he's just, just cool and sinister and stuff. He does have good chemistry, however, with uh, Eddie Guerrero. It would have been a lot better if Ed went farther, but unfortunately with Eddie's death, like, it doesn't. Batista always said, according to my friend, that Eddie Guerrero was the reason why he always cherished the belt. I mean, it helps that WWE made Eddie feel so bad about not drawing, even though he did well with Latinos. And, like, he never took for granted, like, Eddie feeling depressed about not drawing as much, even though he did do well. Batista did well. Batista's WrestleMania probably eclipsed Chris Ben... Batista Cena's WrestleMania probably eclipsed Eddie and Benoit's WrestleMania the year before. WWE is more behind it, that's for sure. I bet they did push... But he's the SmackDown and didn't feel like he got he pushed. Like and we don't know how it would have been if Eddie had lived longer and tagged with him. Eddie and Ray probably could have went lot larger if they wanted to build up that feud. Have Batista turn heel against Ray. Travel could have been good, um not as good as Eddie, but he's had some really dark storylines in WCW. I mean he is really the whole current wife thing was a shame, but like he, he is very funny, even if you don't like the gimmicks sometimes he's given. I'm not sh sure how I felt about Pepe, but like it was way over with fans. It was great seeing him on Thunder or whatever it was, getting his head shaved by Eddie Guerrero. Actually, he shaved himself just to show how he can get to Eddie's level. I bet mean, it was hard for him to get that far. In the dying days of WCW, I felt like Chavo. Travel felt like a downgrade from having Eddie Guerrero on the roster. Travel didn't have this classic match with Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit in New Japan and WCW and ECW. Psychosis. Something about him felt like... Well, he's not as charismatic as Eddie. He's not as... I don't know. He was d definitely downgraded by the ECW in WWE with uh, Colonel White and stuff. But I, he definitely could have benefited from a program with Batista with... Eddie Guerrero gone. He involved himself, Batista involved himself with a Ray Travel Guerrero feud. Etc. May replicate the Donald Kiss Guerrero storyline with Travel Guerrero. Travel Guerrero did end up as ECW champ thanks to Kane. Thanks against Kane and he, thanks to Eddie Guerrero. I start, thanks to uh, Edge and La Familia. That was the highlight of that. Um, I would like to see Batista join La Familia, thanks to homage to uh, Eddie Guerrero, not to mention that Edge and him both are like backstabbers and money in the bank. I don't know, I would like to see, again, like to see Batista cash in on money in the bank sometime. It's a really bad time against the guy who's very weak, because I felt like he would do that very well. That plays up to his character very well. He'll later be placing a feud with Undertaker, which later got eclipsed by Jericho and CM Punk and Shawn Michaels versus Undertaker and stuff like that. I actually lost the belt to Chris Jericho on Raw in a cage match, and I totally forgot about that. He was involved in MMA. He had this feud against Cena, where he was like feeling like he wasn't the top guy. Unfortunately, it made, made him look like he wasn't the top guy. Which I think was incorrect because, like, there were times when Bautista was over Cena. And Cena was never the guy anyway. He was never Austin or Rock popular. I remember how when he was getting pushed by WWE during the Evolution feud, that PW Torch fans and Russell, World Wrestling Insanity fans were like, he's big, he's slow. And they were very like anti the Vince McMahon mold, but like they totally forgot his charisma and his ability to act. Like I felt like that's really what's missing in WWE now, like acting, promos, charisma. It's all wrestling now, and people. I don't think people watch wrestling just to watch 
I don't think people watch WWE just to watch wrestling. Like, there's storylines and acting. It might not be the greatest, but it's motivated, it's interesting, it's stuff that people want to watch from WWE. Like, you can have all these matches, but there's no story behind it. Sort of like the George Lucas saying. <laughs> and Dave Bautista is now in Guardians of the Galaxy and Disney. What are your thoughts, like, I'm scribe? 